Well, in the last video, we saw what a classifier, or at least one kind of classifier, looks like. And um, a classification model is just a function that takes some input data and, um, and then it returns a class. And maybe in the simplest case, that class is either uh, true or false, although it could be other kind of categorical information. And, um, and we saw that it was not that different um, than uh, the linear regressions we've been doing, right? The logistic regression model that, that we had was based on multiplying our inputs by a vector and, um, and then trying to convert that to a number as either zero or one that could then be treated as a Boolean. Okay, so here you can see that the models uh, are not that hard to use once you have them. The real magic was, well, how did I get these numbers and are they good numbers? Are these coefficients um, kind of meaningful, these model parameters? And so the typical machine learning steps are, are kind of several, right? The first is that we actually need to train the model somehow and training refers to the process of figuring out what these coefficients are going to be. Uh, then we want to test or evaluate the model, figure out, well, did I actually come up with good numbers here or is it not going to work that well in the future? And then finally, after we've come up with those numbers and we feel some confidence in them, we actually want to use uh, them to make new predictions um, like we're doing right here. Okay. Now, something that would be bad would be to use the same data for training and testing. And uh, why that is bad is that uh, perhaps, perhaps during training, uh, we just try to memorize the answer. Um, it would be like if um, for a course I gave a practice exam and then uh, the real exam was exactly identical to the practice exam. Um, somebody who does well in the real exam maybe uh, just memorized all the answers and didn't actually truly uh, learn. Memorization is not the same thing as learning. And, um, and so what we'll want to do is we'll want to have different data sets for these. Uh, but often we're originally just given one data set. So we'll want to split our data into two parts, right? So we can have some data for training and, and some data for testing. And, um, and just like you might want your practice exam to have some similarities to the real exam, um, we might want to take some care in how we're doing that, that splitting, right? So I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna do that. Um, once we have these two parts, right? And we want to perform these three steps overall, um, we could do those by hand. Uh, but in general, we're going to be using sklearn. And um, sklearn has uh, different types of objects called estimators. Um, one estimator, uh, an example of an estimator is a linear regression. Another example is a logistic regression. And all of these estimators have these three functions, or methods, I should say, uh, fit, score, and then predict. And, um, and those three things correspond to these three steps that we generally do in machine learning, right? So sklearn is going to make it easy for us. Um, fit, we're going to be given some example inputs and outputs, and that's how we kind of try to learn the coefficients between them. Uh, score, we're going to be given generally given different inputs and outputs, and it's going to evaluate how well the model does mapping those inputs to those outputs, right? Maybe sometimes it'll um, kind of do the wrong calculation and, and kind of get a wrong answer, in which case the score will be worse. And then prediction, right? We don't know what the ground truth is, right? So we're trying to predict why, and um, and hopefully we make a good prediction. Um, now, in addition to predicting, which gives us a class, right, or a classification, um, we could also get these coefficients for intercept, right? You won't generally do that, but that's exactly how I got these numbers here before. These first three were coefficients, and the last one um, was the intercept, right? So you could absolutely, after you train the model, out that information and deploy the model in some other way, not using sklearn once you have that information. Um, so here I have that same data set from last time. I'm not going to be using the ones column anymore. Um, that was kind of helpful before when I wanted to uh, do everything as a, as a vector multiplication. Don't have to do that anymore uh, because the predict and um, fit functions are going to be doing that for us, right? They're going to automatically uh, be adding that one column. Um, as before, right, we had this Y field, which we did a regression on. I'm not going to worry about that today. Um, we're just going to think about how we can make good predictions on this Z column. Okay, so I have a couple things um, imported here. In sklearn, under model selection, I'm importing this function called train test split. Um, that's going to be able to split this data frame into those two parts for us. And, um, and then these other pieces are... Uh, well, I have a linear regression. We're not going to use that. And then logistic regression, which is our classification model, not a regression um, despite the name. Okay, so first things first, let's call this 
let's call this function on our data frame and I can do it just like that and um, and when I do that I get it's returning here an array of two data frames so maybe the easier way to do this is to say train test equals like that and I can look at well there's my uh, training data I have 75 rows there and um, and there's my test data and, and then here I only have 25 rows um, that's a default I could if I want to um, kind of split up the data differently. For example, um, I could say that I want my training data size to be half of all the data. And so if I do that again, now um, maybe it's a little hard to see, but I'm getting 50 rows. Oh, I doesn't like 50 rows. Um, here, here, let me do this. I'll look at the, uh, the shape of both of them. Train.shape and test.shape. And I see, okay, great. It's kind of um, dividing them up equally. Um, so, so let's take a look at these, and um, and something to keep in mind, right, is if I run this again, it's non-deterministic, right? So maybe here, let me do this, make it a little bit more clear, right? Every time I run this, it's it's doing different data, right? It's kind of randomly um, choosing that, and because it's randomly choosing it, um, I could look at this thing I'm trying to predict, and and um, it's very possible that these classes are not kind of divided evenly across the training and the test data, right? So you can see here, um, I guess that's actually pretty close. Let, let me try again, I mean, it's random, right? So I got a little bit lucky, uh, that was actually pretty similar. There we go. You can see that there's a lot of skew here, right? In my training data, I have a lot of trues, and in my test data, actually that was very close again, wasn't it? Um, the randomness is not helping my lecture. Um, well, anyway, you can see that uh, before I had uh, kind of a, a higher skew there, right? But it's often that um, it won't be divided equally, and um, and that can mean that it's not very meaningful to evaluate this test data uh, on the test data after we've learned on the training data. So it's very common that people will do is they'll pass in the stratify, stratify, and um, stratify can be a bunch of columns that we want to kind of be evenly distributed across these. And it doesn't work on, it doesn't work on numeric data, like why, right? Just to complain about that. Um, but I can absolutely do that on my Z column, my categorical column. And if I look at the value counts here, um, you're gonna see that I'm getting it uh, pretty evenly split. And um, I'm not sure why it's not exactly perfect it was before. But anyway, it's, it's gonna make it more evenly split than it would be um, otherwise, we'll kind of commonly train, uh, generate our training and test data like that. Okay, so now we're all set up, right? We've, um, heading up here, we've got the data ready for both of these steps. And, um, and so we're gonna use the training data for fitting and the test data uh, for scoring. So, so let's head down here and I'm gonna create a logistic regression. And, um, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do, right, is that first machine learning step. I'm going to train it. Take a note here, this is the training step. And when I'm training, right, I have to have some X values and some Y values. Let me actually just run this here. And then if I hit Shift Tab, it'll actually give me some autocomplete. Um, I need to have my X values and my Y values. And so what are those? Well, if I head up here and I look at my training data, um, I just want to grab those first three columns. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say dot location. I want all the rows, and I want the columns x1 through x3. Remember that when I'm doing a column slice on a data frame, it's actually inclusive. So I'm going to get those things. That's exactly what I want. Down here, when I'm training this thing, I pass in those, those three fields. I don't need the one column anymore because the logistic regression will add that for me. And, um, and then I need that uh, thing I'm trying to predict, that Z column. So I run that and I've trained it in an instant. Okay, so how good did I do? For that, I need to call lr.score. And the scoring function does, um, you know, that's available for regressions too. And um, depending on what kind of estimator I'm using, it might mean different things. But if I hit shift tab here, it's telling me that it's returning the accuracy. Basically, what percentage of the times uh, did I get it right? 
And, um, and so the data I'm feeding it in is almost identical here, right? So I could do this. This is uh, bad. Well, it would be bad if I was trying to be using this for my actual score. It's bad because this is the data I, I trained on, right? So it's kind of like cheating, right? We've already seen this data before. Um, the actual step I would do uh, would be the test data. And um, and that's the same thing. I just change, change train the test here. And I see in this case, well, it was actually um, does pretty similarly. And um, so I don't really see signs of overfitting here. And, and maybe I just say, you know, not a real uh, measure of performance, right? I mean, I might still do that to compare these to see uh, am I overfitting my data or not? Um, but this would, the second number would be my most meaningful number. And, and I guess I've kind of gotten unlucky here in that, well, it looks equally good right now, which I didn't see when I was prepping before. Okay, so those are those steps. Um, right, so kind of heading back up here, right? Let's just review this, right? So we, train the model, uh, we evaluate the model, and then we can use it to make new predictions, right? And those methods are FET, which we've seen, or which we've seen, and then PREDICT. So let's actually do some predictions. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to say all R dot PREDICT. And, um, and in this case, right, I just have X data, right? I could, if I wanted to, I could grab this, and I could do it on that data frame, make a bunch of predictions. Um, also, if I wanted to, right, is I could just directly um, put some numbers down here. So if I say like 100, 20, 10, I'm not going to quite work because it's always expecting, you know, a list of rows. So I could do that. It predicts that's true. Uh, what if I say that's like 200, predicting that's false. So I can make those predictions like that. And if I wanted to, right, if I wanted to kind of go back to how I started and write the predict function myself, I could pull out that vector. And, and the way I would do that, if I really wanted to, is I'd say lr.coefficient, lr.intercept. Um, those are not methods, right? They're just these values that have been populated, and, and I could use those up above.